global crime syndicate is attempting to chart our future, decide humanity's destiny. From my deep research, they are the worst possible group to be trying to control human destiny. In fact, anybody historically that tries to control human destiny by force creates an absolute nightmare. And with these globalists, it is their conscious plan to create a dystopian nightmare. They believe that they're creating a artificial survival of the fittest social Darwinism for our own good. Uh, this is going to be another very important transmission, to say the least, Congressman, former Congressman, Ron Paul is going to be uh, popping in at the bottom of the hour. The former Secret Service agent who quit uh, over the tyranny he saw in the federal government, uh, Dan Bongino, is going to be popping in as well. And Staff Sergeant Joseph Biggs, who I talked at length with uh, last night and this morning, is going to be joining us. It was very strange. I hadn't talked to him in a few weeks. Uh, of course, friends with Michael Hastings, the mysteriously deceased. Well, it's not too mysterious now. We know he's pretty much killed. The evidence all points there. Uh, Michael Hastings. So I just put my children to bed at about 930, and I sent him a text. And I said, how are you doing? How is Hastings' wife doing? And he said, oh, are you texting me because uh, of CNN tonight? She's on. CNN with Piers Morgan and seems incredibly happy. So uh, I went this morning and watched it and it totally freaked me out. He said he's had reporters, you name it, Fox News calling him saying they thought it was very bizarre as well. Uh, just smiling uh, like she'd gone to the first Beatles concert when they came to the U.S. and you know, the women's eyes are just starry eyed. People do weird stuff when they're uh, Uncomfortable, but see, that's the problem. That's the problem. She told Staff Sergeant Hastings and other of his military friends, Hastings, Joe Biggs, that she was going to bring down who'd ever killed him at the memorial. And then when we were going to send reporters out there a few weeks ago she called him up crying saying please don't do it and so we decided to give her a few weeks she said i've got an investigation going i think you'll mess it up and staff sergeant biggs can't even bring himself right now to call her up I don't know how much he's going to say when he gets on air with us, but there's a lot more to the story, too. And I tell you, it's really hard being a journalist because I'm a political pundit. I do analysis. I rant. I rave. I guess it's entertaining sometimes as a train wreck. But the reason this broadcast is successful is that we've proven historically to be very accurate and to be able to predict what's happening uh, in the f uh, far out from an unfolding. And because I'm real, people, people know that, and they pick up on that. But it is torture to be told things and then talk to other sources and confirm things that are just bombshell. And then to have to sit here on information because you've not been authorized to release it, that quite frankly is dangerous. But they killed him. You can bet your bottom dollar that. You can bet your boots. And we're going to be talking about that coming up. Whenever I'm speechless, folks, it's because I can't say what I know. Because I'm the type of guy that just goes with what they know. And when I know something and I can't say it. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread 
Ride On Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cysts, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. What I know about the death of Rolling Stone journalist Michael Hastings has a lot of Army Rangers and regular Army and Special Forces scared. Scared to talk. Looking out their windows at night. Looking under their cars. It's one thing, I guess, to go to foreign lands and be engaged in combat because then the peer pressure says it's okay. It's another thing to watch your friend's car blown up and know that federal agency visited Hastings the day before it happened and that he told his friends via telephone and email and said, they're coming after me. And all that's come out. And then Piers Morgan goes on TV last night and says it's a conspiracy theory. And I want to cue that up to when he starts to go to the widow and, and then calls it a conspiracy theory. He, he says there's a lot of conspiracy theories. He was working on a big story. He said in an email, my biggest story ever, CIA, they're coming after me. They're going to raid our offices, get lawyers. And then his car blows up. And then now we have the surveillance footage of it going down the road, explosion, and then it goes off the road into the tree. And that's what all the witnesses have said, and the police tapes have come out. And what I know, I've told the radio listeners, and no mainstream media will pick it up because they're controlled. None of them will touch it, except for some San Diego and L.A. TV stations, to their credit, but no national media. And his friends and family all know the feds were there, and that's why they're so scared, because they see the feds on the news saying, we never visited him. And then there's more about what Hastings said to friends and family. And quite frankly, people contact me with this info who are on record to be his friends and who are on record to get his last communications. And then they're like, yeah, but we, we can't go out public with this. It's too dangerous. What's dangerous is knowing this stuff. I'm going to play a clip from Piers Morgan, but let me just show you if you're a TV viewer. Radio listeners can pull this up on InfoWars.com, Michael Hastings' wife says suspicious crash was tragic accident. Paul Joseph Watson. Elise Jordan tells CNN that Rolling Stone journalist was on trail of hot story. So, uh, to her credit, um, the known government operative, UK operative, globalist operative, Piers Morgan says it's a conspiracy that he was even working on a big story. But let's talk about her for a moment because she told Staff Sergeant Joseph Biggs and others at the memorial crying that whoever did this was going to be brought down. Now, since then, she's clearly been threatened because hours after I had Biggs on the show two weeks ago and I said I was going to fly him and investigative journalist Wayne Madsen, who's an expert in uh, investigating murder for hire type operations, and other reporters, InfoWars reporters. In fact, I was already pulling the trigger to go myself. He calls up and says... That afternoon, well, she called me up crying and then handed the phone to a friend saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't blow my investigation. Please just give me a few weeks. And then her friend said, please just go with her wishes. Now, let's talk about Elise Jordan. Let's go to her biography right here. Catherine Elise Jordan, born in Holly Springs, Mississippi. 
Jordan served as the director for communications in the National Security Council from 08 to 09. That is the shadow real government that runs the entire enchilada. You can go to the bibliography there uh, where it links directly through to the Atlantic Wire and the White House and AP about her bio. Okay, AP, White House. Th th that's a fact that she was the director of communications or PSYOPs for the White House Office of Presidential Speech Writing and the U.S. Embassy Baghdad and for the Commanding General Strategic Advisory Group at the International Security Assistance Force, headquarters in Kabul, Afghanistan, as well as speechwriter for Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. She also served as Director of Communications in the Naval Security Council before marrying Michael Hastings May 21st, 2011 in Mississippi. Two years later, Mr. Hastings is dead. Now, she's got some explaining to do, and I understand she's a widow and our heart goes out to her. She had a child with Mr. Hastings. But she knows the feds came to the house and they're lying. And she knows that Hastings was working on a big story and that his car blew up. That's what the witnesses are now on record with the 9-11 tapes confirming what other witnesses said. It's going down the road, it blows up in the middle of the street, then goes off the road into a tree. That's what the surveillance footage shows. Boom! An explosion underneath the car. That's why the engine went blowing out the back, the opposite direction, because it's under the car. Probably in front of the engine. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't like having to report on stuff, but it's my duty. You understand, it's almost like slavery that I can't be an egomaniac and I can't be into just enjoying myself and being a, a narcissist and a nihilist and going and having fun. I would love to go scuba diving in the Caribbean. I would love to go to the Smoky Mountains again. I would love to go to Colorado. I would love to go see really cool, neat people I know all over the world. I would love to take the offers, you know, to fly by private jet to you know, the south of France. I can't do it because I've got too many responsibilities. And I'm not up here saying I'm some goody two-shoes, oh, aren't I great. But I am risking my life bringing you this information because somebody's got to do it. And my instinct is to tell the truth and stand up against this. I just can't sit here and bow in fear like everybody else does. That's why I just admire Staff Sergeant Joseph Biggs. Because the other Army people he knows that were even better friends with Hastings than he, they know all of it, folks. And they know what Hastings said before he died. And, you know, I've just gotten to the point of why am I even told this stuff and then I can't tell people about it. And I've already told over 10 reporters about this. And they, by the way, already know. It's an open secret. And I just can't believe, oh, he's been on, some of my contacts have been on the phone with Fox News, it's called him and others today, everybody knows that the boat is sinking. Everybody knows the captain lied. Everybody knows the war is over. Everybody knows the good guys lost. And then now the long winter sets in of slavery where now the criminals go, yeah, we're spying on everything you do. Yeah, we're spying on petty crime with the NSA. Yeah, we're watching. Yeah, we're going to take your kids whenever we want for no reason. Yeah, we're going to put poison in the water. It came out in the news that, oh, Gardasil sterilizes women. Oh, who would have thought something being pushed by Bill Gates would sterilize women? Really, uh, who, who would have thought they want it for 11 and 12-year-old girls that are about to go into puberty? <laughs> I mean, who would have thought? We're just going to let them do that to us? It, it, it's, I'm not going to sit here and take this stuff, okay? Where are the men in this country? Everybody is so scared. Well, I'm scared of being scared. I'm scared of living in fear. Let's go to this really creepy, disconcerting, unnerving, that's the word being used by the media behind the scenes, with the creepy British intel guy, Piers Morgan. You know why I blew up at Pierce Morgan? Because I was disgusted by him. My skin crawled. He looked like a vampire in person, folks.
He looked dead, like a reanimated corpse. Well, I'm not dead. I'm not dead yet. I'm alive, and I'm not backing down. My ancestors didn't, and I'm not. And civilization is built on men standing up to gangs and thugs. Civilization should be built on ingenuity and ideas and what you bring to the table, not being a bunch of armed thugs feeding on populations. I will not consign my family to slavery. I will not sell out to evil. So the car is driving down the road, and all the witnesses say it blows up and then into the air and into a tree, and now we have video of it driving along and a big explosion in the middle of the street, just like all the witnesses said. Now the 911 tapes are released, which the feds fought to stop. Uh, and, and she told people at the memorial, I'm going to take down who did this. So maybe she's putting a big act on so they think she's going to shut up. Uh, undoubtedly, she's bare minimum been threatened. But remember, folks, she worked for the highest levels of the real government in this country. This is so creepy. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. You know what happens when good men do nothing? Evil takes over. Thomas Jefferson said that. And it's true. Uh, later in the broadcast, a story we put out yesterday has been picked up by the Daily Mail. Foster mother beats toddler to death after she was taken from biological parents because social services discovered them smoking pot. And had talked to neighbors and family and said, oh yeah, sometimes the dad smokes pot. And so now the little girl's dead. And a minority of people on the YouTube video I shot about this last night that's up on InfoWars.com, and I've tracked back some of their handles and names. They're actually cops in Williamson County. Uh, they don't even hide that fact. Uh, you know, say, hey, shouldn't be smoking pot. It's the law. So, I, look, I, I know you got to say that so you feel like you're not part of this evil system. The government ships in the drugs, the hard drugs. On record, they try to put kids on hard drugs in the schools, the pharmacological drugs. Uh, the truth is, uh, our government has more people in prison than, than any other government in history. The truth is, our government grabs more children a year than any other government's ever done. The truth is, it's a giant racket. And we're going to have a special report on that after Ron Paul uh, leaves us uh, at the end of this hour. Or if we run out of time, it may be towards uh, the, the next hour. Uh, getting back to Michael Hastings, I want to explain something here. The feds did visit him a day before. He did put out an email to about 20 of his closest friends saying, hey, if anything happens to me, they're coming after me. I'm going into hiding under the radar to release a big story. They're probably going to raid different offices. Be ready. Get lawyers. Uh, that's all public. First, they called it a conspiracy theory the first few days when we told you. Okay? Now I've talked to his friends and others off record. Only Biggs, Staff Sergeant Biggs, is willing to go on the record. And he talks to other people that were at the funeral, the memorial. They're all scared. And obviously, they know why. They see the FBI on the news saying no feds visited Hastings, and they know that's not true. Some of these people talked to Hastings that day, and he said, they're coming after me. And then I go, well, you got to go on record. And they're like, man, I'm scared. I got a family. These people kill whoever they want. Now, look, the bigger issue here is, is anybody with a brain knows they killed Hastings. Now we have the video. The wife goes to the memorial and says in front of bunch of his military buddies, I'm go crying, I'm going to bring down whoever did this. And she believed he'd been killed. She goes on Piers Morgan looking like she was trying to win Miss America, you know, just radiating charm, totally happy, you know, oh, yeah, this is great. Uh, yeah, the conspiracy theorist, a 180, folks. So if, if, uh, if his charming beauty queen wife... 
uh, is an actress. She deserves Oscars. I, I mean, I, I, I just don't know what to say. Was it acting when she cried and said, I'll bring these people down? Or was this acting? All I know is something stinks under the floorboards. God help us is all I can say at this point. Uh, th this is the type of thing that really freaks me out and makes me hate my job. Because honor dictates I tell the truth and I go out and I expose this. And where it leads is really, really shakes my confidence in humanity. I mean, my God, if we'll sell out our own families, ladies and gentlemen, we'll sell anybody out. That's one thing these contractors brag. You know, they'll kill their own mother if they're told to do it. Oh, that's real manly. That's real tough. You'll kill kids if you're ordered to. That's real tough. Now, the truth is you're a bunch of gang member cowards that do whatever you're told. And it, it, it's really shameful. This is the stuff that North Korea is made of. Sergeant Big standing up and telling the truth is the stuff that America and freedom and everything good is made of. So we're going to be continuing to scan all this. And we're getting to the point where it's all come out now. The footage, what happened, the witnesses, they blew his car up. No need to even go out to California. And I guess the system doesn't care now. They just want you to know we'll kill whoever we want, whenever we want. End of story. And it's just an open secret, and all the reporters I talk to know it and know what I know, and it's like, yeah, everybody's scared. So we're a nation of cowards. Well, my listeners aren't cowards, and I'm not a coward. We're taking action against this evil. I want to tell you about privateinternetaccess.com as we go to break and come back with Ron Paul. We hear news stories every day about the NSA spying on people. Privateinternetaccess.com provides cybersecurity. Encrypts internet connection, hides your IP address, providing anonymous browsing, provides firewall protection, for, prevents data mining, provides uncensored access to complete internet, also protects you from hackers, not just the government, maintains no records whatsoever, computer activity, can connect to five devices simultaneously based in the USA, works anywhere in the world, privateinternetaccess.com. And then don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, about InfidelBodyArmor.com. It stops up to 308 and more, stops hundreds of rounds, not just what the ceramic does, six or seven. XXL, backpacks, a whole bunch of great stuff. Check out their online catalog, InfidelBodyArmor.com. InfidelBodyArmor.com. We'll be back. When the writer and editor at Rolling Stone's car blew up, Michael Hastings, I said we should investigate it. The eyewitnesses all said that they saw a big explosion in the street, then it flew off the road into the tree. Well, footage got released last week showing the car driving on the road and a big flash under it, then it goes off the road. Now they've released the 911 transcripts. The witnesses all saw the same thing that previous witnesses said they saw. A big explosion. His wife at the memorial said that she was going to, quote, bring down whoever did that. She told Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs that and others. Um, she, one of his last emails was sent to Joe Biggs and others who Joe's talked to who are afraid to speak on record, but they're the ones that talked about the feds going to his house the day before. He, in an email, uh, said, get ready for raids, get, get lawyers. I'm going into hiding. I'm going off the radar. It's CIA, boom, his car blows up. I mean, that's not even two plus two equals four. That's one plus one equals two. I mean, we've got to investigate this. Now his wife, and I know she's under a lot of stress, went on television with Piers Morgan, of all people. Um, the uh, interview's up on Infowars.com, an article by Paul Watson. Uh, but this is a very interesting lady. Uh, Ms. Jordan, not Ms. Uh, Mrs. Hastings, uh, married him back in um, May of 2011. Before that, she was the Director for Communications of the National Security Council. Then I won't go over the rest of her pedigree. That is, is shadow government and above CIA, above everything. That is the top of the pyramid, folks. And uh, very interesting. So I, I guess she, she knows. I guess she's changed her mind since she told... Uh, Joseph Biggs and others, uh, that she was going to bring down whoever did this. Uh, Joe, I know this is hard for you to talk about. You couldn't even talk on the phone last night. It was so upsetting to you. You, of course, were in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, he was embedded with you in 2008 in heavy combat. You knew him for years. You, he was, you were one of the people he sent that last email to that he was going into hiding, that they were basically after him. 
Uh, and I guess we're the bad guys. I guess there's nothing to see here, even though the footage shows the car now blowing up uh, before it went off the road. And I guess that's normal. Mercedes just blow up in the middle of the street now. Yeah, I was uh, I was a little unnerved by uh, her calmness in a sense in that video. I know, you know, just seeing it brought up in the news last night gave me goosebumps, and it just put me in a hole. It just shifted my mood from being out and happy, hanging out with my friends, to just being sad. And then I couldn't even hear the interview at first. I didn't even get to hear it until this morning. But just to watch it, I mean, she just seemed happy. And then either she's finally getting over this or she's one hell of an actor and she's trying to, you know, play a facade and try to, you know, get everybody off her trail. Who knows? Sergeant. Uh, I know we're walking in a minefield here, you know, a lot more than you can say. So do I, so do his friends. Uh, it's not just that she's putting a nice face on there. She has electric charm, like a beauty queen, like Miss America up there. And her, her eyes look like she's having the time of her life. But I guess people do strange things when they're under stress. We can, we can make excuses for that. What about what she said to you at the memorial service about how she was going to bring down who did this? I mean, this is getting like some type of uh, whodunit movie. I mean, I mean, this is getting to be like an action adventure, but real life. I don't know. I, I, I can't. I, I just don't want to believe that she's come to that conclusion that it's this tragic accident. I mean, it is, it is a tragic event that happened, but accident, I still just don't see that as a possibility. I mean, there's too many... Too many things out there, especially with that new video, just seeing that, I mean, that just blows your mind. I mean, that right there is pretty intense. And then to just go on there and then say it's an accident, I just made my stomach hurt last night. You've got a distinguished military record in your own right. A lot of tours and heavy combat. You've been blown up in an armored vehicle before. I mean, you've seen things blow up. When you look at that, because all the police, military, I talk to you, they go, oh, my gosh. You see the bomb go out underneath it. That's why the engine shot out the back. The bomb was clearly in the front and bottom. The engine shoots out the back. The car goes off the road. Uh, I mean, you, you, you've you seen a lot of explosions and IEDs. What, what, I mean, what does that look like to you? What does it look like to the investigators I know you're talking to? I mean, it definitely looks like some kind of an explosion. I mean, I mean, cars just don't do that. I mean, the way that you see that, that bright light and then you can just see the, well, before you even see the explosion, you see his, his light. And it looks like if you pay attention to it, it looks like he lost power. And then you see the explosion. You see his tail lights going through down the road, and then all of a sudden you just see nothing. And then you see a flash, like he lost control or just because the power went out or something in his car. And then you see those explosions. It's Absolutely. You, you see the power go out, and then you see an explosion under the car, and then it goes off the road into the tree, exactly what our forensic people who went out there, reporters we had to go out there, said it looked like the tree was barely even damaged. It came to rest up against the tree. Yeah, I've had three or four people go out there already, and I just I just talked to a buddy of mine a second ago, and he was just out there the other day, and the tree's pretty much unscathed. I mean, it definitely doesn't look like a car hit it at 130-some miles an hour. Well, the car looks like it's going 80 to me in the video. Uh, let me ask you this question. Uh, what can you say about her texting you and then the phone call and her crying in the background? I mean, uh, I, I mean, because she goes from that to this. Well, that was two weeks ago. She heard that from the show we were going out there. Uh, I mean, can you talk about that, or should we not go there? I mean, that's, there's nothing really to it other than, you know, she seemed like she was completely fine. I told her that I was going. And then, you know, just a few days prior, she's, you know, her friend, no, she didn't even answer the phone. Her friend answered the phone and said that Elise wouldn't be talking and that she doesn't want us to go to L.A. and, you know, please don't go. And you could hear so, her crying in the background, correct? Yeah, you could hear some stuff like that. It was just, it was just odd. And then now this, I just don't get it. Well, I mean, if my dad or my wife had just died a few weeks before, a month before, and I went on television, I guarantee I'd break down crying. I mean, she's just an amazing person, I guess, uh, that, that, that she just, uh, I guess, went through it all. So we can commend her for her just radiance, like it was the royal wedding or something. I, I, I don't know. I mean, but then again, you know, she's probably, she could just be throwing people for a loop, who knows? I mean, she said she was working on an investigation herself, but who knows?
Yeah, she told you that in, in, in text and in person that, that she's doing an investigation. So I guess, uh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that video footage, I'm just glad that they finally released something like that because that's something that needed to be seen by a lot of people. A lot of people are starting to investigate a little bit further now and uh, breaking down this uh, footage. One of the guys, David Wayne, he uh, wrote for Law & Order SVU. And uh, I know he's got a lot of uh, film analysts and stuff like that going through there. And he's the one that told me, he, he said he could notice how uh, the power shuts off in the car just before that first, you know, flash you see. Stay there. Tell us what he told you as a forensic specialist. And then I want to get your take on where we go from here with Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. I'm Alex Jones. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro filtered sports bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go bag favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest shower filter system, and the Aquapod Kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. You know, he's been in a lot of combat with embedded uh, reporters, and he was telling me off air what they do compared to Hastings. And I got to say, my gut is Hastings was more than met the eye. And the fact that he was scared when he called people, when he wasn't scared in heavy combat. Well, repeat what you just said, Staff Sergeant Biggs, and then let's get into what that forensic specialist has been telling you. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, I've, from day to day, you get reporters that come through, and a lot of them don't last long. They get scared, and, you know, it's, you, like I said before, you, you get to learn a lot about somebody. And just even in 30 minutes of combat, you can find out who really is somebody who, you know, who's there to talk and who's there to do the walking. And a lot of these reporters would come in here, you know, acting all hard and this and that. And as soon as that bullet flew by their head, they'd shriek over in a little ball, start crying. And, you know, they'd be calling their uh, boss and say, get me out of here. I, I can't do this. You know, Mike would just sit there with a smile on his face and wouldn't flinch at all. I mean, I remember one day we were on this uh, mountaintop at the Pakistan border, and we were getting attacked by a you know huge fellow Taliban. And uh, you know we got Apache helicopters and little birds flying overhead, warthogs in the air diving down, shooting. We had Hellfire missiles going off by our head, and you know artillery rounds, all this stuff going on. And he's just sitting there, not shaking one bit, just like the rest of us who were pros at it. I mean, it, it was just to see him so calm compared to every report I've ever seen. I mean, it was. Uh, pretty intense but he was scared before his death yeah and then you know to see this whole flip you know i've seen him in some of the most horrific situations any person could ever be in and he wasn't ever scared so to be able to you know to hear the three four five days out he was just you know out of his mind scared well you know why he wasn't scared of death from what i've seen as a reporter I th he was scared by what he learned, and that's what you and others are saying, is that he was freaked out. He went from saying, oh, we'll work with the government, to they're the enemy, they're bad, we got to stop them, because of what he learned, and that's what got him killed. And I, I, I have to tell you, my expert opinion on this is, he was probably CIA, uh, a, a good guy, thought he was trying to help America in a CIA army fight over turf wars. That's what some of my sources have said they believe the intel is. He found out some really bad stuff, wasn't going to be part of it, and he knew they were coming. And I think he morally knew he had to put this out, and he made that decision. I think that's why, uh, and, I'm, and of course, I'm speculating here, but that's what, that's what I think is going on here. Uh, any comments on that? I mean, who knows? I'm, there's so many unanswered questions right now at this point. I mean, just like I said, I've never seen... A uh, reporter so, you know, poised and so calm in combat. I mean, the guy was a pro. I mean, he knew what he was doing. He was great out there at it. So 
know, just being that scared. Oh, I'm sure he was. Out. And then all, all of his friends that I talked to, I talked to a couple on the phone earlier. And, uh, you know, it's just odd to see someone like that just be so scared. You know, yeah, and, and then we're not supposed to him. investigate it. Uh, in closing, the few minutes we have, other points you need to make. We're going to get you back on as soon as you can to uh, commercial free on the nightly news to break all this down. Tell us what the forensic people you're talking to are saying. Um, they basically didn't notice a lot of stuff. Like I said, the power going out, the explosion, um, how there's, you know, there's definitely no damage that could have been caused from that tree. Everything happened prior to the tree. Um, they said they noticed some uh, really weird... Uh, impacts around the roof area of the car so that that's pretty odd like a like the, the roof was pushed out like up and out a little bit like a dent you can see so uh, i've got a, a group of guys that are just basically taking all that footage and going frame by frame by frame and uh supposed to be sending me a copy of all this breakdown and as soon as i get that i'll uh get a copy sent over there to you guys Yes, so sir. Gonna, yes, sir. You've got order. all our. Uh, you've got our email contacts. Yeah, I got everything. I got it all. Okay, good. We'll double check that because as soon as that comes out, obviously the danger is is while we're getting this ready. After it gets out, we're going to be uh, protected somewhat. But this is this is uh, definitely. Uh, has this changed your views on anything on how the world works? Or, or I guess you were already uh, awake. That that happened uh, within six to seven months. My first time in Iraq back in '04. So. Uh, my, it's just, you know, you go out there and you're fighting for, you know, your country and then just all this stuff happens. And at the end of the day, you know, really all you're out there fighting for is just the guy beside you and you kind of start wondering what this country is being all about right now sometimes. It's just so shady, the things that go on. It just saddens me. Absolutely. Well, Mr. Hastings was more than meets the eye and the establishment figured that out too. He was going to bring them down, and, well, they brought him down. Um, uh, amazing. Joe Joe Biggs, we appreciate your courage, Staff Sergeant. And I want to talk to you during the break about when we can get you on the nightly news for a full debriefing for everybody to get all the angles out. This is a big deal for the free press in this country.